coming to Leadership the 100 Way, sponsored by the 100 Black Men of Las Vegas. Yes. Yes. We want to ask you guys to all come up and take one picture before the right now, because when, at the end of this day, everybody's going to be scattered out. So we want to get everybody in for a group shot, if possible. We would love for you guys to come up and take a picture with us, please. Can you guys come up? Please take a picture. I would love that. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're gonna have to put some of you guys more together. But guys, I want to thank everybody for coming today, and to all the students. This was the first step of adding value to yourself. It was very important that you come here today to to just add value. And you know, once again, let me tell you who I am. First of all, my name is Bruce Milo. I'm a member of the 100, okay? I am a father, I'm an entrepreneur, and um, you know, I've, I've been in Las Vegas doing business for about 20 years, and, and I just love this city. And I just wanna say that being a member of the 100 was very ins inspirational for me, you know? I, I'm surrounded by just wonderful brothers, and now that I'm here, and I get a chance to work with the, the students like you, that you guys, are, you guys are here, just to really, it's the first step of taking to add value to yourself, and that's, really positive thing, so I just want to thank you. Okay, now, one thing I want to do right now is to let you know that um, we're going to bring up our brother, Gentry Richardson, right now. Gentry Richardson is our president, okay, of the 100 Black Men. He's going to come up here and let you guys know what's going on for the day and what's happening and what we're doing with the 100 Black Men in this wonderful event, Leadership the 100 Way. Thank you, guys. Mr. Gentry Richardson. Thank you, Bruce. Um, and thank you, everybody, for coming and participating in this. All of the uh, um, the youth that are here for this leadership conference, this leadership event, please stand up. So we're giving you applause because you're the future. And we're proud of you for taking the time to invest in yourself for the future, for your future. And we have some, as the 100 black men, we are committed to advocate for you, to make sure that you're successful, to ensure that, to ensure that. So we have, we've had situations where we needed people like you available, accessible. Hopefully you've given us your information, Phil, you sit down. We get filled out everything because we have, we had, I'll give you an example. We had an opportunity for five, five people to go to Drake University to get a full ride to go to law school. They couldn't find anybody. Mm. We had internships, paid internships with stipends, which means paying for your living, paying for your living expenses, getting you there. I believe it was with, I think it was something like, like Merle Lynch or something. And so, and we had no, in San Diego, we had nobody accessible to go there. The opportunities that come across to us are phenomenal. They're game changers for you in your life. And that's why we're doing this as the first part of it, so that we have you ready to be the next wave of leaders. As, as you see what's happening in the world today, we need you to carry the torch. But in order to do that, we want to give you the tools to be able to do it in a significant way. Uh, when I was I was mentored uh, uh, by a lot of guys from the military, captains and officers in the military. They picked us, they brought us in on Saturdays, and they made us make one commitment. And that one commitment was that everything they taught us, that we would take it and bring it back out into the community. They said, we will invest our time in you because we want you to carry this torch. And that's what we're doing, and that's what we're asking you to do. And so that's why you're here. Uh, again, we want to get your information and so that we can set you up for success. Now, I understand you got, you, you got your part to do also, right? But I, I like to say no excuses. When we, have our, when we take our mentees through our, the first part of a, uh, our Crossroads program, we have to memorize a passage regarding excuses. Okay, and, and so that's how we look at it. So we don't, we have, 
you have no excuses. If we can give you the tools and you apply yourself, then the road is going to be the road is is going to be a lot better, a lot easier for you. It's not going to be all the way clear because there's folks out there that don't want you to make it, but we're doing what we can to help you. So again, thank you for being here. I want to thank the 100 brothers for being here to support and and be a part of this and be a part of our commitment to you and the community. And um, I'm going to go. Before I go into the introductions, I'm going to start with myself, and then I'll take it to the introductions of the, uh, the 100 Brothers. But again, Gentry Richardson, I have been, uh, I've been senior executive in, in corporate. I've had my own businesses from, uh, from art galleries to, to modeling agencies to international types of uh, uh, in international businesses that I've run. I currently have my own consulting firm that's, that, uh, that really focuses on diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, 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 grant writing. So we, we do a lot of things that, we, that, that impact the community and we're growing. As a matter of fact, we're, we're actually now at the point where we need, we need to add people. So uh, in a nutshell, that's what I do because I only got so much time to dig in, but I want to just give you an idea of, of uh, um, how, how I've been able to build a career. I, I've built it with my wife. Uh, we're currently in two locations now. So there's, and, and I wasn't supposed to be standing here. I came from West Side of Chicago, uh, had, to, had to have, I, when we have time one day, I'll tell you my pancake story. Okay, because that's, I mean, that's, that's there's, there's things that happen that you look back to, what's that, what's that shift, what's that game changer in your life? And uh, when we're, later on, we'll get into some workshops, I'll tell you my pancake story. But anyway, that's me, and uh, I'm going to start off now with, well, who's next? Everybody, you want brothers, you want to stand up, or how you want to do this, Bruce? Yes, can everybody I'll hand it back over to Bruce. Uh, Bruce, I'll let you have him. My pleasure, my pleasure. And I'm now the G, professional, my brain. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Clarence Rogers, and I'm into technology. I've been into technology for over 25 years, and I am rugged. Not because it's easy, because it's necessary. And I'm up for the challenge. I am rugged because what you see is what they'll be. So I've been in technology as a software engineer, and I seen a shift going on in technology. They have what they call a citizen developer. A citizen developer is an individual who takes the time to teach themselves or learn on the internet. How many of y'all are into sneakers? And you heard of sneaker bots. Everybody who programs a sneaker bot is a citizen developer. They taught themselves, and that's what we expect for the future. We have to teach ourselves, we have to know what we want to learn, and go out and learn. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Mel Tiller. I'm a retired captain in the United States Marine Corps. I was the third African-American promoted to band officer in the history of the United States Marine Corps. And when I was promoted to band officer, there were 10 positions in the entire United States. Today, I am proud to be a member of the 100 Black Men, and I host a radio show called Keeping It 100 with Mel and Bruce. I'm Mel. That's Bruce. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How's everybody today? Good. Great, great. My name is Daryl Rayford. I am the CFO of the 100 Black Men of Las Vegas. And I'm not going to belay a long story upon you, but just like uh, our president said, there's no excuses. I went to night school, got my bachelor's. Went to night school, got my master's. Worked my way up in accounting, CBS Television, ABN Amarillo Bank. Fell in love with golf, moved out here. Worked with Cirque du Soleil for 15 years. Wife retired me, sat on the Lazy Boy. Wife said, you gotta go get a job at McDonald's. I don't care what you do, but you're not sitting on this Lazy Boy. Came on part of this uh, great organization, and I push him. And why do I push him? because of you. There's no excuses. 
One of the things that we have at this chapter is we don't want you to start from the ground. We do not want you to start from the ground. We want you to start from our shoulders on up. So if you want to talk to me, love to talk to you. Oh, by the way, I'm a professor over at uh, College of Southern Nevada. I'll see you later. Good morning, my name is Joe Martin. I'm the Vice President of Internal Affairs for The 100. Um, I've lived in Las Vegas for three years, grew up in St. Louis, spent 22 years in Chicago. Like some of you, I had a father in my life, many of us did, but when I got to college, I was the guy who was too cocky and almost flunked out of college. It was brothers like this who encouraged me to continue moving forward. Moving forward, I graduated with a degree in computer engineering, I then went and got a master's in MBA in international business. My career, I've done 30 plus years in telecommunications. So all of you with cell phones, I helped start those. All of you who are on the internet, I brought the internet all over the world, traveling to 12 different countries, expanding telephones and, and internet. Um, this organization is about helping you, motivating you, giving you opportunities. Take advantage of us. We're here to help you. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. My name is Raymond Lambert. I'm the membership chair of One Young Black Men of Las Vegas. I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, and like those of you that are here, I didn't go to college as soon as I got out of high school. I joined the United States Air Force. And one of the things about the military is that it gave me the self-confidence, and it made me believe in myself. It really taught me the art of taking tests. I did 28 years in the United States Air Force, and I retired as a cargo supervisor. I loaded all kinds of cargo planes, C-5, C-17s, et cetera. I was responsible for doing that. But professionally, I worked in city government. I helped to set public policy as it impacts cities, whether it's public works, police, et cetera. And because of that, and because of learning the art of public speaking. I was on the board of directors of Haight-Ashbury Free Clinic, which is a renowned organization out of San Francisco. We were dealing with the AIDS crisis. I also was on the board of directors of Neighborhoods USA out of Washington, D.C., and we dealt with a lot of neighborhoods and we dealt with a lot of urban planning issues. I was also on the board of directors of the National Forum of Black Public Administrators, where we dealt with young people like yourself. Because of the Air Force, I'm here today. Good morning, how are we doing? Excellent. My name is Carlos Hank. I am currently a captain with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Currently the highest ranking black officer on the department. So I've basically tested to the highest position on Metro. The next positions are if God bestows them upon me, that will be that will be outstanding. But with the support of my 100 black men and the uh, the community, hopefully I'll get there. A little bit about myself: grew up in Louisiana, born in Chicago, Illinois. It's a very common theme. See here, we've got a lot of people on the south side of Chicago, Cook County Hospital. Uh, everybody has issues that go on in their life. They have obstacles that go on in their life. They have things that occur. Take those times of opportunity when you fail to fail forward, to continue on your dream, and to be consistent. And you will power through life and you achieve your goals. Like uh, Brother Lambert, I didn't go into, I didn't uh, join, I go right into college after high school. I went to the United States Marine Corps, spent 12 and a half years, went into aviation, wanted to be a cop at that time, they told me I was a little too young. Uh, but they said, but you can work on helicopters and jets and stuff like that, and we'll see, what that, see about that cop thing later on. Got a burning desire in the year 2000 to become a police officer and came out here to Las Vegas Metro, and I've been serving this community for the last 21 years. Uh, if you have an opportunity, if you want to speak to me about a career in law enforcement, I would be happy to. I know that law enforcement is a very controversial subject right now. But like my mother told me a long time ago, you're either going to be part of the problem or you're going to be part of the solution. 
you going to get involved, or are you going to let it continue on doing what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Um, they did a little story on me in the RJ not too long ago, and I told the story to the RJ. Uh, it was a very trying time in my life when I faced a lot of obstacles as a young man, and whether or not I wanted to embrace uh, pursuing a career in law enforcement, or I wanted to hate the police officers that were serving my community. And as I harken back to listening to my mother, and she told me, hey, what are you gonna do? You're gonna let that interaction dictate how you're gonna focus on life? No, you're gonna get involved and you're gonna, uh, gonna contribute. And that's, a, that's, a, that's a path I chose, and uh, it's been great. I love the uh, city of Las Vegas, uh, and I can't wait to meet you guys and uh, hopefully uh, build some relationship with you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Clifton Hines. I'm out of Brooklyn, New York. I had an opportunity to go to a high school that only took one kid from what they considered to be the ghetto. So I, won, I was fortunate enough to get a jet mechanic license out of high school. Out of high school, I decided to skip college at that time and I joined the United States Navy, Naval Air. Had a wonderful career there, got out of the military and went into Los Angeles and got into the car business. I owned a few car stores. From that, I turned myself into the mortgage business because people said they don't bring houses back. So I joined, a, I became a loan officer. From that, I decided to open up a couple of mortgage companies. I had three successful mortgage companies in Los Angeles. Now I run three different businesses in three different states. In Las Vegas, I have a certified affordable housing provider program. I've been in real estate for 25 plus years. I'm also the VP of operations for Five Star Medical. I run a staffing business in Los Angeles, and I also run a staffing business in Fort Lauderdale. I'm the VP of operations for Forster Medical Staffing. All of this is possible from a kid from Brooklyn. I went back, got my associate's degree from Adelphi, and I decided I didn't need a degree because things were what it was. But in this day and age, you need everything. We were fortunate because we got by with limited uh, education at that time. This time you have to take the bull by the horns and get as much as you can because times have changed. I'm here to tell you, it wasn't easy. Coming out of Brooklyn, and going to other parts of the world, I toured the whole world. I started in San Diego, Point Magoo, and I went into Southeast Asia. We were on the Coral Sea. We were top flight, top decks. We ran the whole entire flight deck. It was an incredible journey. So nothing's impossible. Just keep dreaming, and it's all going to come together. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Antonio Fargus. Grateful to be here. Um, it's been a long journey. You know, I grew up in New York. I was a baby boomer, born in 1946, and the world was different. The world had an innocence, and uh, I was one of 11 children. Uh, my dad was a garbage man. He picked up trash, and he and he picked up trash for dignity. He had a uniform. My mother bore him 11 children. I was the third oldest. And I was looking for, I didn't know what I was looking for because there were so many things that kept me or kept me distracted. But my mother had a dream. And she saw in the Amsterdam News, a newspaper out of Harlem, they were casting a film about uh, gangs in New York. And, uh, and she urged me to, uh, to try out for that movie. And my whole world changed. And so at the age of 14, I started in the theater business, and film business, and it's been quite a journey. It's been a long, 62 years I've been in this business. And, and somehow the journey brought me to Las Vegas because I knew there was something else I needed to do with my life. And I, me and my wife we came here 16 years ago. We found the African-American community 
and, uh, that I didn't even know existed and the rich culture that was here um, and the rich history that was here. And I worked at the um, West Las Vegas Art Center and then I, I was blessed to be able to, uh, to join this magnificent organization when Daryl talked about standing on shoulders. You know, I know that my journey was bare my shoulders for you, for you to stand on. And uh, I was just talking to one of the young men there who came to the art center, AJ, who's still here in this program th today. And I was talking to Carlos Hanks, talking about when he was a young man, he looked at, up on the screen and he saw very few people of color. But he saw me. And that gave him hope. And then he saw the Tuskegee Airmen, which gave him hope. So, uh, like Jennifer said, this is all available to you. We don't want you to start from the bottom up. But you have to do the work. And the 100 Black Men in Las Vegas are offering many, many opportunities for you to be able to say, I can be that, I can do that. And what you have to do is reach out and ask for help. So, grateful to be here, willing to answer any questions, um, and meet you and talk because uh, it's important. This day is important. Thank you. My name is Willie Coleman. This is amazing brothers in this organization. Wow. I'm just meet, meeting some of them for the first time. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm Willie Coleman. I'm originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I joined the military because my mom wouldn't let me stay in the streets of Florida. So I joined the military, 25 years in the military. Kind of a lot of with now. I uh, joined the military, as you can tell, I got a loud voice. Because I was that guy that made you a soldier in the military. I was the guy that had the brown hat on. I was the one that made you a soldier. All right, that was me. I took you from the streets and I made you uh, into a fine specimen in the military. All right, uh, and while in the military, I also got into uh, a little bit of, uh, we call it combatives uh, back then. And uh, what it is, is a form of hand-to-hand -hand combat. So I got into teaching you self-defense in the military, or the ones that was going into the military. We fight overseas, so we had to make sure they knew how to protect themselves when they got in there and they couldn't use their weapons. So we had to teach them a different form of hand-to-hand -hand combat. So we developed combat. So I was one of the first ones to go through that program. Started teaching it. Started refereeing it, so when I retired out of the military, after flying around in black uh, helicopters, I got into the cage. So I was that guy in the cage. You saw those UFC fighters. So I was a referee in the cage, making sure they were doing things left and right, doing what they needed to be doing. So I was a referee for a bit. After retiring after 25 years, came to Las Vegas, right here in the NLB. Started my uh, college journey. Finished here, and I was heading over to Dubai to teach aviation maintenance, but something uh, something I uh, came in the way and I purchased the business. So now I'm a proud business owner here in Las Vegas here, teaching people, young people, and old, to work in the casino industry. So if you're interested in that, that's Thank you. Good morning, I'm David Carrion, originally from San Diego, California. I'm a retired chief pay officer from the United States Navy. I did 20, probably 22 years. Served the operations specialist while in, in the Navy. Basically, I'm the guy you see in the movies in that dark room with the radar saying bogey at 6 o'clock. I'm that guy. Um, you saw Battleship. I'm the other guy that was next to Rihanna saying <laughs> that his right hand is a target. So that's my highlight being in the Navy. But one, one thing I did learn while I was in the Navy, being a chief head officer, I learned to lead. And that's one thing you got to pretty much take in a day to day life, you know, from coaching to being the 100, doing the 100. Also in the Navy, which I'll tell anybody when joining the military, Make sure you get a degree while in the military. Let the military pay for your education. Now, if you want to be a guy to really live the life, get your degree prior to going. You would be a captain or tired of the general or anything like that. But after retiring, <laughs> retiring the Navy, I decided to step in the, my roots up here in Las Vegas where I work as a contractor in Nelson Air Force Base. Kind of taking what I learned in the Navy, doing it with the Air Force, because it all kind of comes together. You know, even though we're all different branches of the military, we do kind of the same stuff. So we do networking stuff on board, not on, not on board, but on the other Air Force Base where we shared data with aircraft and ships and the ground units. And I wanted to have got that when I got my education. So I pushed the education like most of these 
these young men over here push. So get your, get your degree if you can, pick up what you ever can get, your certificates. Like um, the brother was saying earlier, you know, computers is, is the future. So get those networking degrees, get these computer uh, net, well, security plus, get all that good stuff you can. Because basically the world says get a degree, but those certificates do push you further. So that's pretty much what I had to say. I've been to 100 black men a little over a year. I've heard them on the radio, that's how I learned about them. Then I started asking around Las Vegas, different people, and you know, a woman I know, I say, you've heard of 100, say yes. Great organization, I know this person, I think she pointed me in Ronda's direction, actually. And Ronda pointed me toward Raymond, who's our mem 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 uh, membership chairman. And it's been great ever since. And that's pretty much all I have. Anything about the Navy, questions about being enlisted, or anything about the military, I'll be in the back. I'll share my experience. If you want to travel, join the Navy. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Russell Whitmore, uh, originally from Texas, a uh, member of the uh, Technology Committee, where Clarence and also co chair of Legion 100. I've been in Las Vegas 15 years now. Uh, got my bachelor's, former college athlete. I, I played a little ball back in the day. I uh, got my bachelor's in business administration, minor in marketing. Um, after graduation, I went to work. Uh, worked nine to five during the week and got my MBA year and a half, eight in the morning, six p.m. Did that for a year and a half, so that was a sacrifice. Uh, father of two amazing sons, one is here. Um, and currently I work in technology, finance, and project management. I also have my uh, insurance licenses in 16 states. Uh, just here to, happy to be a part of this great organization. I've been here almost a little over three years now. Um, the motto is, and I live, try to live by it, what they see is what they be. So I try to be that to my, my kids and all the youth that I come in contact with. So thank you. Happy to be here. Good morning. My name is Kirk Richards. I am originally from Kingston, Jamaica. Um, when we first moved here to America, it was five of us. One, two, three, four, five. And my little sister was the lucky one because she was a baby. She get this, She got to sleep in the crib. So it's five of us in a one bedroom, okay? Five of us. And we've, we've made our way through um, years and years. Went to college, Bethune Cookman College in, um, in Daytona Beach, it's H HBCU. Um, currently, moved, got a promotion now to move out here to Las Vegas. I currently work for Morgan Stanley. I'm a business development manager and wealth management advisor with them. I, I run, help to run about six offices. We manage about 120 billion. And ask on their assets, um, but as well as also I have my uh, excuse me, charter retirement planning counselor as well. Um, so if you want to retire and retire properly, um, especially when you're young, you want to start when you're young. Um, you know, definitely make sure you're having the conversations with the right people. Um, wanted to, to continue to give back. I went to an, a, an event when I used to live in Orlando, Florida of the 100 black men and I was really amazed by the amount of support and camaraderie that I saw among those men. And when I moved here to Las Vegas, I wanted to continue to pursue that and continue to make sure I give back to the community here. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm really passionate about. I'm really proud to be up here and be in front of you today. And so that's it for me and thank you so much. Good morning, I'm Dwayne Kyles, and um, I'm a board member of the 400 of uh, the of Las Vegas. Um, who am I? I am the proud son of Roosevelt and Dolores Kyles, the devoted husband to Shayla Kyles, and the proud father to DJ Jr. and, and Gabriel. Um, professionally, I wear a few hats. So what am I doing now? I am a, have a property management company. I'm an entrepreneur, um, real estate investor. I'm also the only African American senior network engineer at the University of Las Vegas, Nevada. My responsibilities here at the university are, I'm responsible for the police emergency dispatch system here. I'm also responsible for the call tree. So whenever you call, say, the admissions office or registrar, any of those call trees, I'm responsible for that as well. I also was tasked with, when the pandemic first ensued, to make the university remote capable. At that time, it was an on-campus 100%. And we got, we, got the, we got the email basically saying, prepare the university to be remote. 
So me and my colleague, we had to engineer that whole thing and everything began remote. It was a real tight deadline. So long story short, that's that's what I do professionally. And looking forward to talking to you guys later. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ron Freeman, and uh, this is actually my first meeting with the 100 Black Men. I joined an organization a couple of months ago, and I'm excited about being a part of, uh, of an organization and of a community. Uh, just a few things. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, yes, sir. and I love Detroit. Yes, sir. Okay, because I love home. Okay, and, and I respect it. And just like anyone should respect where you come from, that's where you come from. You gotta love where you come from because that's what helps you be the person that you are. I don't have a lot of things to say about myself and career, you know, I can go into that, but I got a few things that I always try to share with my children, okay? And I want you guys to keep this in mind as you go through your life and your career. Number one, don't make long-term decisions for short-range problems. You can have some problems that you think are long-range, but they're not. You know, make sure that you understand this will pass. And I see it because I've done it myself and other ones. Make decisions for problems that are short-range. You make long-range decisions and it's not good. So keep that in mind. Okay. Number two. Everyone, when I say everyone, I mean everyone needs some help sometimes. I don't care who they think they are, rich, poor, young, old, black, or white, don't be afraid to ask for help because everyone needs some help. Um, find your passion. It might not be the passion that your parents want you to have, it may not be the passion that your friends want you to have, but you got to be passionate about something. You won't be successful in a career or in your life unless you are passionate about what you're doing and you know, what you and who you feel about. Um, keep your expectations high. Don't lower your expectations for your life to get along with other people, to make other people feel better because you've lowered your expectations in your life. You can't do it, okay? Because once you start lowering it, you're gonna be what people want you to be, lower and lower and lower your expectations. Then you forget your purpose. And then lastly, You got, again, battles and wars. You can't treat a battle like it's a war. Battle will be over with. School will be over with one day. Okay, trust me. Nobody is going to have to go to school for the rest of their life. The science class will be over with one day. Anything that is troubling you, the short term problems, don't treat it as a war, treat it as a battle. Hey, Good luck to you guys. Uh, good luck to myself for being a new member of 100 Black Men. And uh, we wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you. Morning, morning. My name is Kenny Cottrell from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I am the, or a couple of ads, I'm the CEO of County Surf. Uh, we're in Grand Canada's business. We're a THC and Surf. Um, also, construction project manager, uh, built all kind of mansions and restaurants. Uh, I actually just moved here in UNLV, got my bachelor's last year. Uh, and I'm in a master's program in urban leadership. Um, very excited to be a uh, part of this organization, 100 Black Men, which I joined uh, almost two years ago. Uh, my big thing here is community service. I uh, own youth, I did work with, uh, I did work with 100 Black Men as a youth, they gave me scholarship. Help me out, and now I feel like it's up to me to take forward. So, if got any questions, ask me about cannabis construction or just my time in LB. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. My name is Diamond Davis. Uh, like many of my other brothers, 
I'm ex-military. However, I was drafted. Yeah, I'm getting on better. Um, I went to college after I got out of the military. I got my bachelor's degree and my master's. Currently, I'm a retired human resources executive. Also, I teach at Cal State East Bay in the human resources development program. Uh, in addition, I'm from the Bay Area. Uh, also, uh, I went to Benora, it's a consulting firm. I work with the Veterans Administration as a consultant, Social Security Disability, and also as a rehabilitation counselor. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to talk to everybody. My name is David J. Antoine. I've been a member under the Black Man Las Vegas for three years. Uh, I currently work in uh, software quality engineering. I basically test software for a living. I've been doing that for my career over 20 years. After graduating from the University of Michigan, it's uh, in computer engineering, go blue till I die. Um, I was introduced to this fine organization by my brother-in-law, Dwayne Haas. I am happily married to his sister. Uh, it's been a great three years I've worked with this organization. I work primarily in the, uh, in the education department, um, basically uh, on top of that and, and doing the things that I do for testing software. In their page for three years, I've enjoyed it and continue working with a proud organization with a lot of wonderful, hardworking, intelligent, and some say genius level brothers. It's been a pleasure of mine to work with this organization for the last three years. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Joseph Anderson. I've been the uh, uh, chairman of the mentoring division of uh, 100 Black Men in Las Vegas for the last six, seven months. Glad to be in that role. I have relocated here from St. Louis, Missouri uh, two years ago with my wife and I, and we love 100 Black Men of Las Vegas. I am past president of the 100 Black Men in Metropolitan St. Louis. I was president when the Ferguson uprising occurred, and the 100 black men in St. Louis at that time was instrumental in changing the laws in the city of Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, what I want to say to the young folks here is that there's no accident that you're here today. Use these brothers for everything you can to get information out of them, find out what you can do for yourself in terms of what they've done, and by all means, Make sure you come out of here better than you can. Thank you. Good morning. Very, very quickly. My name is Kelsey um, Anderson West. I am originally from Pontiac, Michigan. I moved to Las Vegas August 18, 1989 to attend UNLV, where I graduated after being expelled um, from majoring in clubology. Well, glory to God, not only did I come back, graduate, but right now I'm working on my doctorate. Um, keep it very quickly, thank you so much. Little time. And so, um, <laughs> to tell you what I do, I, I, I am a local pastor. I, I'm the founder of Senior Pastor in my ministry's Christian Church. I have dedicated my life to serving the community. I am a community pastor. I serve with NAACP. Well, actually, I just finished my rookie year with the 100 Black Men. Amen. I just finished that rookie season. But I also serve um, in our community NAACP. Yesterday, they they um, they um, um, inducted me uh, as board member for the Urban Chamber of Commerce. I work with Salvation Army, Susan G. Coleman. Um, one of my greatest achievements um, for the last 25 years, we have helped more than 2,200 students attend and graduate from HBCUs. And so I welcome you today. I ask you to take advantage of this moment. And on behalf of the 100, let's have a great day. Say, I mean, it, it's and, and let me tell you, you know, uh, these brothers were being humble. They had a lot more to say, but we told them, "Look, live it to say." Most of them did a good job. So, <laughs> 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 just kidding. You know, you gotta learn my sense of humor. But no, uh, 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 a couple of questions. One is, did everybody write? Did I get everybody as far as uh, the uh, participants? name on the sheet of paper. We're doing a giveaway at the end. I want to make sure I have everybody's name on here. I got yours, right? I got yours? Yeah, I did it. Okay. Also, the reason we are here in this space 
and UNLV, and one of our one of our, our key supporters for this, who we are, uh, uh, appreciate very much, is Dr. Keith Whitfield. And I'd like for him to come up. He's the president of UNLV. Uh, can't thank him enough. Thank you and good morning. Y'all got to do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like me just listen to, that may have been a hundred, <laughs> that were each in their own way incredibly inspiring. Um, for the young people that we have here, you need to listen to those stories because you'll be telling a story at some point in time in your life. And you want to be able to have the richness to it. You want to be able to have the smartness. I love those. I wish, I, I'm a nerd, so I wanted to take notes on uh, those suggestions about how you handle adversity. Um, I'm going to give you my very, very quick, because I know you're trying to move the program, my background. Um, I found it interesting, uh, the connection with the military and the service. My father was in the military. He started off as an enlisted man, radio repairman, flying over North Korea back a long time ago. And um, I was born, and he got the opportunity to go back to school to, be, to become an officer. And it's fascinating because as I think about him, and in the later part of his life, I asked him, so what were you thinking? You know, what, did, were you really trying to, or how did you position yourself? And he said it was just an opportunity, and I had to capitalize on it then. So I was born, he flew back, we flew back, and he started school at the University of Colorado Boulder. So I always called him, I'm, I'm the college baby. And somehow that must have stuck to me um, because I got a few degrees. And, um, but I, and see, I'm a professor, so I can talk forever. I'm going to make this short. Um, it's so fascinating that you never know the opportunities, the events that happen in your life, and how they can change you. And it's the reason why you have to embrace every single one of them. And, and I can tell you, being here today, this will be one of them for you. Um, I just want to say, whatever you do, the, the other common thread that you heard is about education. Uh, it's a little heavy-handed given that I'm the president of the university. To say that you should get your education, but you should. But your education comes not only in the form of going to UNLV or some other school. It comes in terms of the things that happen in life, and you have to pay attention, and you have to learn. There is lifelong learning now. You cannot stop learning. Even if it's just your cell phone, the new version that comes out, you've got to learn constantly. So um, I guess the one other thing, because again, I know I'm trying to keep it short, but um, I do have a interesting distinction of that I am the first African-American president of UNLV. <laughs> point about that is, is that oftentimes we are afraid to be the first. Because it is an unknown, and given all of the knowns that we know that challenge us, beat us down, just take away from us, it's sometimes thought not to be a good idea to be the first. But I want to encourage you, don't be afraid to be the first. Because the goal of being a first is actually so that you can bring along more with you. I represent only less than 3% of the college presidents in this country. And so, um, <laughs> I think of all the other firsts that I've done in my life, and I never did them to be the first, but I always use the first to try to bring along people behind me. So, in this room, I assume that one of y'all, y'all can talk with each other and figure out who it's gonna be, but one of y'all need to be college president someday, okay? <laughs> Uh, with that, I, I do apologize because I've got a couple of other things that I have to do today, so I'm not going to be able to stay here all day. But please listen, be inspired if you can't take notes. Uh, but remember this moment in time, this is a great moment in time. Also, 100, this is your home. Y'all, whenever you need to come here, you just let me know. We'll make sure we make it happen. Thank you very much. so amazing and once again so 
Thank you everybody for wonderful introductions and I get a chance to probably introduce myself. And I'm gonna be super brief. I just wanna let you guys know once again, I am Bruce Milo. They call me Downtown Bruce, but keep it on the show. And I was the youngest, I'm the youngest business owner in Long Beach when I had a store. I um, started off with a record deal when I was 17 years old. And then right from 17 years old at 22 years old, I opened up a store in Long Beach called the Smell Good Company, which I still own. And we sell wholesale now to over 100 stores. And I love entrepreneurship, and I love entertainment, and I love service in the community. And I'm here in Las Vegas to serve, and that's what I'm doing with the 100 Black Men of Las Vegas. But now, I want to bring on somebody who protects Nevada, one of the persons who's involved with making this event happen. Very inspirational, I love this brother. Major General Andre Berry. Gentry, real quick, uh, yeah, they're eating the donuts. <laughs> they bring them up here, and can I have Dr. Whitfield come up here? You know, be president is talking in class right now. <laughs> but j j just real quick, uh, before we get started, one of the uh, traditions we have in the military is we like to just uh, acknowledge and reward those who have done uh, things of excellence, and so. Uh, when you become a general, they allow you to make you get, make your own coin, and, uh, and and my coin talks about being battle born, battle ready, as it relates to uh, when people do things that make a difference and are, are game changing and uh, are, are pivotal in terms of what we do in our respective communities. Uh, when you do positions like this, you don't get rich. They don't build uh, statues of you. Sometimes they don't even say thank you. They're always coming at you. And the level of resilience that you have to have is just un un unmar unremarkable. So I just want to say on behalf of uh, the great state of Nevada, there's my, uh, you got to shake, you got to do it right now. Yeah. We got to shake now. Come on now. Your father knows about this. Appreciate all that you do. All right. And then Gentry, uh, we're going to give him a raise this year. <laughs> we're going to give him a raise this year. But, uh, but lead the 100 black men and all that they are doing in Las Vegas to make a difference in the quality of life of the citizens. Uh, we are better off because the 100 men in Las Vegas show up every day and make a difference. So thank you for your leadership. So I just want to thank both of you for your leadership. All right. So I, I will, uh, I, I got like about, uh, I got about uh, 15, 20 minutes, 25, 30. If I go over, just, just say go, keep going. But uh, I'm sure everybody, everybody has a mirror, right? Okay, and then you should have a something to take notes with. And uh, I think uh, the university president said it best. Uh, I, I would hope that this is full by the end of the day. And then you have the 1619 Project book. So I just want to say, welcome to your greatness. And uh, let, let me do this. Uh, what the young people that are here today, uh, if you are in the back of the room, can we get you to come come up this way? I don't want to, and we will switch seats with you for some of the 100 members, but we want them to be in these four first four tables, if that's okay. So can we make a quick shift and get them in the, in the front part of the room? Because you always want to be in the front of the room. You don't want to be in the back of nothing. So if we just make a switch, it's, and it's okay to hurry. It's okay to hurry to bring them up here. Oh, y'all? Yeah, y'all, 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 But uh, the ones who had a lot of birthdays, they got moved. Okay. All right. All right. Appreciate that, because it's just really critical and important that they get a chance to be, I'll be, everybody else will be eavesdropping, but I'll be talking to y'all. Uh, the, the biggest thing that uh, I'll just say as we get started today is we're going to be talking about leadership. And uh, I say this all the time, and I learned this a long time ago in life, that the first person you must lead is yourself. And say, it starts with me. Matter of fact, just holler it out. It starts with me. Say that to somebody. It starts with me. Because we always want to point, uh, become victims, blame. But it starts with me at the end of the day. So if you want to see a change in your life, if you really want to go to another level, if you want to elevate who you are, it always starts with you. So it, you, it, you have to start on the inside. And one of the things that people cannot tell you is what you were born to be. They don't know what's inside of here. They don't know the unlimited, untapped potential that you have. So 
Be the, be the change that you want to see in the world. Everybody got your mirrors out? I'm going to ask you to take them out and open them up because I want you to be looking in the mirror at yourself as I talk about this. So you should have this right in front of you. It ain't for makeup, it ain't for your hair. It's just about, well, I'm talking to you right now, that person in the mirror. Can, uh, can we read this together? There's a saying on the back there. Some people think it was from Michael Jackson. It is not. It's from Kachin. One, two, three. Let's read it together out loud. If you want to... Okay, that's who wrote that. It wasn't Michael Jackson. And if you want to make the world a better place, you got to look inside of you to get there. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to ask you a few tough questions as we go through this morning. First question is, uh, do, do any of the young people here, have you ever had a job? All right, thinking about having a job, want to get one? Here's the question you would ask. And you heard a lot of these 100 black men talking about their successes. The first question you should ask, based off of how you showed up today, would you hire you? The way you sit, the way you look, the way you're there right now. Would you hire yourself? That's the question, Pete. Yeah. If you got to think about it, that's not good. That's not good. Or uh, would you want to have? Would you want to have you in a, in a classroom as a student, based off of how you show up, based off of how engaged you are? Uh, do you participate in life, or do you just go through the motions? Are you easy to raise as a young adult? Would, you, did you, would your parents say that you've given everything that you can, or your, or your, uh, or your relatives, or are you just showing up? Uh, would someone pick you for being a best friend based off your degree of loyalty that you have with them on a regular basis? When you find successful people, always remember this, when you find successful people, and you saw a lot of them stand up here today, you must reflect on their leadership journey. It ain't easy. Life is tough. They had the foresight and the discipline to lead themselves. I don't care if you're talking about a rapper. I don't care if you're talking about a musician. I don't care if you're talking about an athlete. I don't care if you're talking about a pilot. I don't care if you're talking about a business owner. They had a basic understanding of leadership. It starts with that right there. It starts off with how you lead yourself. Today, we're going to stretch you a little bit. We're going to challenge you a little bit. But the biggest thing is we want to grow you. So in life, as I always say people are in two places. They're part of the problem or they're part of the solution. So are you leading you? Ask yourself that on a regular basis. All leadership really is, is influence. That's all leadership is. You influence how you show up today. You influence how you're sitting. You influence your attitude. You influence what you got on right now. You influence what you're thinking right now. And you can't blame anybody for that. So if you got something in your mind saying, Man, I don't know if I want to be here, I want to applaud you for being here. You are growing you. Some people are at home doing whatever they are right now. Can we give all the young people a hand right now? We want to applaud you right now for what you're doing. So I want you to think about this. To be the best, it takes persistence. It takes staying where you are, working on you for a lot of hours. When you are listening to these stories of success, that was a lot of work being poured into them. It takes determination. It takes grit. It takes stick to itiveness. It takes resiliency. And I even had this in here. It takes it takes daring to be the first. So when you hear them, when you hear them talking about being the first, you gotta dare to be the first. You gotta tell people, put me in. I'm ready to take this on. During the year of 2022, there was someone sitting here right now. Look around the room. During this year, look around, don't look at me, look around the room. There's somebody sitting here right now. Don't look at me. Look at, look at the people at the table. Don't look at me. There's somebody sitting here right now. Don't look at me. Look at them over there. Look at them right there. There's somebody sitting right here, right now, on the campus of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, on February 26, 2022, that wants to be better. Who is that in this room? Raise your hand. Who wants to be better in here? Who wants to step up? Who wants to go to the next level? Who wants to be their best self? You should be, I should be jumping up and saying it should be me. You should be jumping up and saying it should be me. You should be just jumping up and saying it should be me. You know, that, 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 that's where it starts. But you must understand, and I, and I say this in all sincerity, this is to everybody in here. There's a calling on your life. Do y'all understand that? There's a calling on your life. You were not put here just to be average. You were not put here just to be mediocre. You were put here to do something unique. So the 100, of, uh, 100, 100 black men of Las Vegas, they have your back. Mm. Amen. Let me say that again, because this side didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> the 100 black men of Las Vegas, 
They have your back. They have your back. You just have to understand that. They want to see you succeed. So now is the time. There, I, I can remember, uh, I can just remember uh, a time in my life where I really had to draw a line in the sand and say I'm just tired of just, just existing and not being my best self and not going to another level. So, so and, and, and keep in mind, as I talk to you today, I'm not saying anybody in here is bad at all. So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you have greatness inside of you that's waiting to explode and to come out. So when we see unlimited and untapped potential, and we see that our current and future leaders in this community, we want to just push them. I used to always say this every morning, feed your faith and starve your doubts. Feed your faith and starve your doubts. Because life is really more mental than it is physical. We talk ourselves out of stuff in our head most of the time before anybody else does. So today there's gonna to be some great workshops. Are Mel and Kirk in here, where you at? All right, what, where is it? There, there's Mel, I don't see Kirk in here anywhere. But uh, no, stand up, they didn't see you. All right, I mean, good good Marine right there. Give my hand back there. They, they gonna throw some. Simplify, be all you can be, all that stuff. They're gonna teach you some, le they gonna teach you some le lessons that when you walk out of here, you're gonna have a toolbox. You have a toolbox that you can take home and talk to your parents about, that you can go to school and talk about, that you can talk to your friends and talk about. If it's gonna be, it's up to me. And they're gonna give you some lessons that's gonna even make you better. This is, the, you know, I always remember that this is your life. Own it. Don't give it up to anybody. If there's anybody trying to take you backwards in this life, eliminate them. Some of you need to evict some people out of your life just because they don't have your best interest in mind. And so today, these people have your best interest in mind. And uh, th this, I'm hopefully, that this is going to cha challenge your BS. You know what that means, right? Your belief systems. And so this is all about challenging your belief systems. So you may come up with a concept, an idea, or something that may motivate you. Your game is not over. You are not done. You're the next great leader in this state or this nation could be sitting in this room. You were challenged. You were challenged. You were challenged when they were coming up here telling you because now you know what's possible from listening to all that they were talking about. You know what's possible because it's been done. So the next person in this room, you have to understand today is the time to take that image in your head and in your heart and that, make, that, that causes you to see life, it's there to make you excel. So how many of you really, really believe that you've been put on this earth to do some good? to do something great, to succeed. No, no, I, I want to wave. I mean, I want to wave. Because some of y'all are just like, the, 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 those old pros back there get it, but the young people, I don't think so. I don't know. Y'all no, no, you have to understand. You've been put here to do something phenomenal. And you got to believe that. And, uh, and, 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 I, and I think about this a lot, because you'll get a chance when they're talking to you. You have to understand your personal why. Why am I in this room today? Why did I get up and miss, you know, I don't know if they still have cartoons on Saturday morning or, you know, or Texan or, or PlayStation or I don't know what, what's out there now. But you, you let all that stuff go to be here. Why is that? Because you want to get to the level that you can live with your best self. Think about this. What is my purpose for being on this earth? It's not just to exist. Find the moments and pause and reflect about what they're pouring into me today and what they're asking me to do. This is your time. This may be winter, but it's really your season. And you know, as we go into, get ready to go into March now, you know, you got about 10 more months to go for in this year of 2022. Start thinking about, begin with the end in mind. Do I need to be applying to where I want to go to school? Do I need to be better athletically? Do I need to work on myself physically and mentally and emotionally? Do I need to get a better group of people around me? Am I going to do what I've been called to do? I used to, I used to always ask this question. Could we give somebody else in this life your gifts and your abilities and they will be a better you? And if you have to think about that, because some of y'all didn't understand that question. If, if, if we gave somebody else in this life your gifts and your ability, would they be doing more than you? And if you, if you have to think about that, that is not the right thing to do. So there's, there's five things I'm going to talk to you about today that I want you to carry out here. Please write them down. And I gave you the first one. I gave you the first one. All right, who's not writing? Who's not writing? This is why we write, by the way. This is why we write. Can I ask you a question real quick? What's the first thing I talk about? You don't know. 
I'm asking him right behind you, what's the second thing I talked about? You don't know. Okay. That's why you write stuff down. Because you can't remember it. You can't recall it. Okay, the smartest person may have a great memory, but you gotta capture things. Because learning without application means nothing. So if I don't learn it and I don't apply it, it means nothing. So here's the five things. Alright, you ready right now? You got a pen? You ready to go? Alright. So what about what? Here's the first thing I said. The first person that you must lead is yourself. All right, everybody grab those mirrors up. Really. It starts with me. Everybody grab those mirrors right now. It starts with me. Everybody grab those mirrors. It starts with me. Everybody grab those mirrors. It starts with me. The first person you must lead if, is yourself. Remind yourself this. If it's going to be, it's up to me. Number two, leadership is a choice. No one can make you lead in a positive direction. Your teachers cannot, your mentors cannot, your parents cannot, your relatives cannot, your friends may try. Leading yourself must be the foundation. Life is all about the choices that you make. How will you choose to show up today? That's where it starts. Here's a statement you want to write down. Decisions determine destiny. Decisions determine destiny. How many of you have ever made a bad decision? Because I got a whole lot of like you know, okay? Now think about what that feels like. What are the implications of a bad decision? What, what does it cause me? How long did I have to deal with it? But when you make a good decision, by the way, today was a good decision. Holler out, I made a good decision. Just holler it out, somebody. Because it needs to come out. You say, I made a good decision. I made a good decision. In terms of being here, being present. You may not get it now, but you'll get it later. Number three. You lead differently because of your unique DNA that you have. Know that you come from a rich history and legacy. Pay attention to the 1619 project that they're going to talk about in your breakout sessions. When you have this book right here, pay attention to what's in here. This is talking about your history and your legacy. Is that is in there there is truth. In there, there's understanding. In there, there's pride in who you are. When we don't know our history, we are doomed to repeat it again and again and again. You should be saying to yourself inside, someone, someone did something to get me to this point. You don't become successful by yourself. You stand on the shoulders of greatness. Think about this right here. I don't know about y'all. I kind of got chill bumps listening to the president. I kind of got chill. Oh, he running a whole school. He running a whole school. Y'all get that look at point and say, you go, man. You go, partner. You go, you go, you go. He running a whole, get my hand. He running a whole school. University. Don't tell me what's not possible. By the way, he didn't come up here and say, that was easy. I sleep most of the day. I watch TV, Netflix all day. You know, I guarantee you, he's working hard. And by the way, he's probably going to work today. He's probably going to work tomorrow. But look at the return on investment. He's pouring into young minds. He's creating the future. He's making a difference. So you have to understand, that's the legacy you come from. You have many examples of those who came before you who have faced obstacles like you've never seen before. None of us have been through slavery. None of us knows what it likes to have our child snatched from us. None of us went through the middle, middle passage. None of us see the death of being beat. None of us, we don't get that. We don't understand that, but that's where we came from. We came here, you know, you were born here. You were born close to here. You were born in the country, but it was a force on you. No property, no money, rising in about the worst of circumstances, being able to pursue who they were with the odds all against them, and then becoming successful. That's the legacy you come from. And you get to sit here and have freedom, and all you have to do is learn, is to grow, is to unleash your potential. That's where we come from. And we have the audacity to waste it. Take advantage of it now. No opportunity wasted. And remember this. You must be radical in, re in leading yourself. I'm extremely radical in leading me. I'm harder on myself than anybody else is. 
I talk to myself all the time. Somebody called me when I was driving to work last month and said, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm jumping on myself. <laughs> because I wasn't living up to what I knew I was capable of. I'm three times older than a lot of you in here. So get radical in, 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 in overhaul and being normal. Get radical in overhaul and being ordinary. Get radical in just showing up and being average. Refuse to accept that you were born to be average, that you were born to be a failure, that you were born to go backwards. Have a desire and a pursuit to be a relentless focus on you. And although many of us may think of ourselves as ordinary, each of us possesses unlimited potential and untapped potential inside of you. Number four, you must identify your strengths and manage your weaknesses. You have both. All of us do. The first critical step is just recognizing that. This requires a higher degree of humility, honesty, and courage. Recognition alone ain't enough, though. I encourage you to reflect and identify what you believe your strengths and weaknesses are, and develop ideas on how to manage the weaknesses and the strengths. If you aren't good at math, maybe I need a tutor. If I'm not good at writing, I may need somebody to help me. All right? Uh, if you're not the best athlete, I need to make practice more. But how do you overcome? To, you have to compensate for where your weaknesses are. Everybody has some kind of challenge. And it's okay. This is, and, and, and here's one of y'all's assignments. You find those men that stood up here today and say, can I get your email? Can I be able to reach out if I need help? In those areas you talked about, you, you, you need a village around you. Imagine going to school. And they said, we, you, we want you to write a project on business or, or being uh, on, on theater or, you know, on education. You have a resources here that can help you out. Get their information so they can be an asset to you. So surround yourself with people who make you better, who have your best interests in mind. And keep that in the forefront. And be mindful, be mindful of this, and I'll just, without saying it, be mindful that Strengths can become weaknesses when left unattended or when you have the wrong motive. Just think about people you know who have talent and use it the wrong way. And then it becomes a weakness. And then they can get incarcerated. They can get in trouble. Bad decisions. And remember, and somebody said this, you can never stop learning. Uh, the day that you stop learning and growing is the day that you stop leading. So keep that in mind as you go through today. All right, almost done. A couple more things. All right. So number five, when you lead yourself better, you lead others better. When you lead yourself better, you lead others, others better. Your personal development as a leadership relies on your attitude and your willingness to grow and learn. Improve it every day. A better me is a better we. The one thing you can, you can control is attitude. Having tenacity. Don't quit. Instead of praying for the storm to go away, start praying to get through the storm. The storm's going to come. There's two rules in life that I live by. Here's my two rules right here. Don't quit. And rule number two, refer back to rule number one. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. There's all, our obstacles are opportunities. You can't quit before you even start. Commit yourself daily to being the best. Wake up. That's what this is for, to anchor in. I'm here to do my best today. Look at this every day. I'm here to do my best today. They got this here for a reason. If you want to see a change, take a look inside. I'm here to do my best every, every day. Commit that to every day. The hardest muscle in the body to discipline is the tongue. What you say is a reflection of who you are. So discipline. Have the courage to be the best you. How many are ready to elevate now? We're almost out of here. How many are ready to elevate now? I'm going to say, we're ready to elevate now. So, now keep this in mind. There's two things I need for you as you go through the day. Be humble and take good notes. That's your thing. Uh, uh, actually, I have one, one more. Three, challenge yourself to be even better. The, the, I heard this story recently. They were talking about, how many know who Muhammad Ali is? All right, we all heard of Muhammad Ali, boxer. One of the greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. Okay, and uh, Muhammad Ali was on an airplane. And uh, the, the flight attendant comes up and says, uh, everybody needs to put their seatbelt on. Muhammad Ali, Ali says, no, I, I don't need to put my seatbelt on. I'm Muhammad Ali. And uh, so she laughs and comes back and says, sir, you got to put your seatbelt on. I'm the greatest all time. I don't have to put my seatbelt on. I'm Muhammad Ali. Look like one five, think like me. I ain't put my seatbelt on for you or me. And so, uh, so she says, sir, you got to put your seatbelt on. He said, you don't understand. I'm Superman. I'm Muhammad Ali. I don't need a seatbelt. And she looks at him and she says, 
So the last time I checked, Superman, Superman doesn't need an airplane. He can fly on his own. Put your seatbelt on. That's what humility is. Don't come in here and think you got it all figured out. Don't think you got it all figured out. So you have to understand that if we're going to be the best that we can be, then I need to be present because you have a bunch of successful people around you who have your back. This is about going to another level. This is about your best days being ahead. This is about time to pick a fight with yourself. And sometimes you have to pick a fight with yourself saying, mm -mm, I ain't going backwards no more. I'm here to wake up the sheep, okay? I'm here to wake up the sheep. I told myself, no, I'm not here to wake up the sheep. I'm here to wake up the lions. All right, the sheep stay over there. I want lions in this room right here. Where my lions at the radio today? All right, I'm here to wake up people who are hungry. This is about winning. I want to do what leaders do. Step into this challenge. Embrace your vision. Live your purpose. You are not a statistic. One of the, I'll end with this. One of the one people I really looked up, up to, his name is, uh, he's, former, he's former congressman. He passed away, Elijah Cummins. And he's always just talked about, you know, when you find successful people, especially African-American people, they've been through something. They've been through tough stuff. They can get up more times than they knock down. You can't destroy them. They're just going to keep coming back and coming back. That's where we come from. And he always ended his talks with this, or he always started his talks with this, when he was talking about who he was. He says, I only have a minute, 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, I did not choose it, but I know that I must use it, give an account if I abuse it, suffer if I lose it, only a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. What they see is what they will be. What they see is what they will be. You have seen greatness today. You have seen people reach the highest levels in this nation today. You have seen people who have in their DNA the tenacity and fight to go out in life and make a difference. You have seen success right around you, right in front of you. You've seen people who ain't afraid, who are willing to fight, who got your back, who are stepping up. You have seen people who have been all over the world and made a difference. They bring all of that here. They're going to work on your mindset today, how you think, how you look. They're going to work on your heart set today, how you feel. They're going to put some things in your toolbox. And hopefully when you walk out of here, your skill set is going to be at another level. Hang on. The 100, land, 100 black men of Las Vegas are here to take you to a level that you've never been before. Get ready to step out into your greatness. Get ready to do something you've never been before. Get ready to go back, be who you've never been before, and get ready to be big. Congratulations. Thank all y'all for being here. Matter of fact, all the times it's about what you know, right? But it's also about who you know and who knows you. Major General Andre Berry, thank you again. When you guys watch the news, you guys see the governor, you see Major Andre Berry sit, sit right next to him. That's the guy who's in charge of our National Guard right here. Thank you so much. So this is what we're going to do, guys. Yes. Motivate me all the time. I love that, brother. So now we're gonna, we actually right now, we're gonna get, get ready to take some breaks and some snacks and um, you know, take a break and then you guys are gonna go into your breakout room. So I'm gonna thank you again. And I also wanna just say, you're depositing into the bank of you right now, right? What I mean is you're adding value to yourself. Every book you read, every person you sit down with, every seminar you go to, every time you go on YouTube and look at a podcast about enriching yourself, that's another deposit into your own bank account, to the bank of you. So continue to add it to the bank of you. And just like a savings account, it saves up and you have a lot to spend. So continue to add value to yourself. I want to thank y'all for being here. We took a major step, one step at a time. Rome wasn't built overnight, and success is not built overnight. It's brick by brick, right? And it all start with a wonderful foundation, right? And that's how it goes. So I want to thank y'all again. Thank you. So yeah, we're going to take a 15-minute break, and you're going to go out to the breakout room. So I want to thank you again. Thank you.